Good morning, friends and fellow traders. This is Doug Campbell with Right Way Options, and this is a morning market prep video for August 27th, 2021. Well, my goodness, as this month winds down, uh, we have some issues here to deal with this morning in um, a Fed Powell speech, Jerome Powell speech, and how we're going to continue to react to all of this talk of taper. So how about we settle in, let's buckle up, and let's get ready for the Friday edition of the Morning Market Prep video. Good morning once again, everyone. Thank you so much for being here. This is um, gonna be one of those days where anything is possible um, yesterday might have been a little bit shocking to folks that have been rushing into the market, but hopefully my videos in the morning have kind of been preparing you for that potential risk and you had lightened up um, on that move. Yesterday we had um, some numbers come out. As you know, we, we had GDP come out and it came out hot at 6.6% and then jobless claims came in higher than expected, but we just completely ignored that and we started moving higher. But then as the Jackson Hole Symposium um, kicked in and we started hearing uh, committee members talking about tapering um, and tapering a little bit faster than I think some folks were expecting, well, the market started to act up. Then, of course, we got the terrorist attack over there in Kabul. Um, that also kind of dampened spirits for the market. And we did some selling into the close. So as you can see here, the diamonds has a little bit of a complication in this chart right now. Notice that we do have a lower high showing up here in the chart. Now, that's really only going to confirm itself if we get follow through to the downside. If we get follow through to the downside, that lower high would be more of that confirmation. And I think what we would need to do is we need to break this price support um, before we make a full confirmation that we might be running into some trouble here. So keep in mind, we have a possible downtrend that could be setting up. Remember, the lower high has to be followed by a lower low if that downtrend is to uh, fully confirm. Any follow through today could certainly raise that stress level in the market. So keep a close eye on that. Diamonds showing us a little bit of nervousness here overall. And then let's take a look at that SPY. Now SPY has little to no damage, and I'm gonna go ahead and just say no damage after yesterday's selling. You can see we pulled back into this area, we're testing some um, support levels, and this morning we're trying to push up. Right now it's, it's interesting. Asian markets had a very light, choppy overnight. We had, um, we have European markets just really doing nothing. Um, waiting on the Fed, but boy, not here in the U.S. Um, first thing every morning, we just pump up those futures as hard as we can, trying to encourage those bears to come in. Now, I, I would worry that that could be a little bit of a trap this morning, but as you can see, we're pushing up here this morning in that move. So no technical damage here in the SPY. We're continuing to hold on we still have a bit of a overextension in the uh, short term. You can see how far away we are already from that 50-day moving average. So we do run that little bit of risk of a painful pullback should those bears um, re-engage. If they don't, however, we've got no problems here. You can see we could hold in this area and just turn right around and go right on up and hit some new record highs. So it's all up to Mr. Powell today. Can he somehow appease the market while walking back easy money policies that the market has become so hopelessly addicted to. It's going to be an interesting challenge, and I honestly would not want to be in his shoes today. Let's take a look at the QQQ. QQQ had nothing going on here. In fact, just a little teeny tiny pullback. You'd almost think nothing happened yesterday. 
in the market. So we still are holding in a very, very bullish pattern. As a matter of fact, if it weren't for the big tech giants holding up, I think we would have a very different situation here because the vast majority of stocks moved down, but those tech giants did a really good job of holding the SPY and the QQQ up. So keep an eye on this. We're just resting in here in a consolidating pattern. Keep in mind, we still could pull back into here to test that support. And if we test out the support, um, it might be a little bit painful because of the size of the move, but it doesn't change anything. Um, we are still a bullish chart um, in that situation. The complication would come is if, if those bears do get angry and start start um, rushing in a failure below this price support um, either today or next week or something like that that would be um, that could be of a critical problem here for the market so watch that carefully and closely if we can hold that support we're in good shape let's take a look at our IWM now IWM once again put in a failure at its 50-day moving average. We rallied back up into here, um, that declining 50-day moving average. We have now failed once again at the lower high, despite all of that push, 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 um, kind of a, uh, a failing possibility here in that chart. Now, I know a lot of folks are holding on to hope that we can just push on through back to the upside, but there is an awful lot a price action congestion in here we're going to need something pretty darn bullish to move us through there and it's possible we could get it but iwm is signaling a bit of a problem here and that possibility that it could turn and start heading on lower now once again in the pre-market we're trying to pump it up we're trying to say nothing happened here and we're still hanging um, um okay in in that move so who knows um if if fed uh, if the chairman can um, kind of thread that needle and appease the market and still walk back on the taper, then we probably are in pretty good shape. Um, we could um, certainly rally here, but technically in that chart, definitely some damage um, happening and continuing. Let's take a look at our T2122. The T2122, whoops, we should do the VIX first. Now the VIX, that doggone VIX, we did hold a higher low in here. A little fear coming into the market yesterday with this talk of taper. You can see we've got that little higher low going on in the chart, but we still have this really long-term downtrend uh, that we are underneath, and we have some price resistance in the chart right up in here that could stop us from moving on higher. But that higher low does give us a little bit of concern, and you'll want to notice that we did close above our 50-day moving average. Now, you guys know that I've talked about this many times now. I don't think this gets critical unless we um, close above this 20 handle area here. You can see, look at all this price action in here that's creating that support or resistance level in that chart right through there. And you can see that we could run up here, hit that as resistance like we did right in here and reverse and turn back around. However, this higher low adds that little complication in this chart. So if we were to push through here, the real critical thing would be pushing through and holding this area up here as support, because if we did that, that's where the real selling wave could come into the market. So watch that close. I'm not saying that's going to occur, just saying that we need to be aware of that in um well with all this all of these newsy things that could move us around today let's take a look at our t2122 now t2122 early on yesterday we were up here we came right up in here and um came right up here and tagged that bearish reversal zone as the bulls pushed through we kind of ignored housing or employment numbers and things like that pushed right through to that upside um, then by the end of the day, as you can see, we pushed back down and we law, we we're back below that 50% area here in the chart. So what does that mean? Well, it means that if Jerome Powell can uh, thread that needle and make everybody happy, we have plenty of room for an upside room, 
uh, move. It also suggests if he is unable to do that, we still have plenty of room for a downside move in that chart. So keep a close eye on that. It's a lot, like I say, I wouldn't want to be in his shoes today. That would be a tough place to be. He literally is stuck between a rock and a hard place here. And how he how they work themselves out of this, I'm not sure, and continue to hold this market up. Um, it'll be an interesting task if he can do it. He'll be he'll be a genius if he can get it done. Um, let's also take a look at our T2107. Now T2107 is the percentage of stocks that are above their 200 day moving average. And I want to point out here that we did turn around from that resistance level in the chart. We are continuing to maintain this downtrend. So we've got a few more stocks pushing back down below their 200 day moving average. So we're going to want to keep an eye on that. Remember, I suggested the possibility that um, those big techs are kind of dragging around all of these stocks. Um, uh, like a boat anchor trying to get them to lift up. It's possible they can do that, but um, it's also possible this boat anchor could really pull those um, high flyers down as well. So watch that closely. We'll see how that works out here in the market. I think it would be um, a good idea to keep a close eye on this price action this morning because we're going to see uh, likely see some pretty substantial price volatility around these events you know if Jerome Powell can appease the market and still talk about taper we could shoot up and perhaps perhaps you won't hear a word about taper from Jerome Powell today because I'm not sure that they can effectively taper even though the committee seems to be heading in that direction. So it could be an interesting day. There could be a lot of little humps and bumps and whipsaws as he speaks. So watch that closely. Let's take a look at our economic calendar and our economic calendar has a couple other things we want to be paying attention to here this morning. Notice that we have international trading goods and we have personal incomes and outlays. One of the things we have seen lately is personal incomes have been declining and that is a problem so we'll want to watch that and our international trade well it just gets worse and worse and worse and we've been ignoring it for a long long time as that deficit grows and grows and grows um, how much longer we can continue to ignore that that will be an interesting question and then of course we have the Jerome Powell speech now I do have a a there's a conflict here the um, Econo Day calendar has Jerome Powell speaking at 10 but I saw another calendar that has Jerome Powell speaking earlier th than that this morning so um, I'm not sure what is correct here, but keep an eye on that. Remember, we're also going to get a reading on consumer sentiment. And um, sentiment um, last time hit a 2011 low, so you'll want to pay attention to that. You might also want to consider that the, um, that the Supreme Court held upheld the lower court um, and suggesting that the eviction moratorium is illegal. Um, we kind of knew that was going to happen, but the Supreme Court did uphold that. There are uh, like six states that have their own moratorium. But what that means is, is um, evictions could um, soon resume here. And we also know that we have the um, the, the unemployment stimulus checks coming to an end on September 6th. So we have all of these things kind of coming together. Um, and that's why I think uh, Jerome Powell has got a pretty tough task ahead of him today. Okay, so let's take a look at um, some stocks. Well, first let's do a real quick look at the um, earnings reports. Earnings, um, we have a light day of earnings reports. There are quite a few um, 24 companies listed on the earnings calendar, but most of those are very small cap and are not 
notable at all. I could really only pull out a couple of notables for today. Um, we've got big lots reporting this morning. It looks like retail is continuing to sink here pretty hard. We had quite a few retailers that had been pumping and pumping and pumping higher, but it looks like those costs are really starting, the, those inflation costs are really starting to impact them. So big lots not looking so good here this morning and HI, uh, HIBB. Um, also reporting and looks like they got a nice strong report here moving on up and those are the only two notables that I could really come up with today um, lots of very very small caps and a lot of unconfirmed reports this morning so not much going on there so how about we take a look and see what's going on in stocks that could be setting up for the day but before we do that guys if this is the first time you've seen these videos if you could please click that subscribe button on youtube and also click that bell icon when it pops up so that you'll be notified every time i post one of these videos and if you find these videos to be worthy please do me that favor click those thumbs up buttons leave a brief comment i apologize yesterday i was teaching a special class um, and didn't have a chance to answer the comments yesterday but i'll be back on task here this morning so thank you so much to everyone who does do that it it does mean the world to me i truly truly appreciate it and i also have to do the shout out for those folks supporting the channel on buy me a coffee um that that just helps a ton and you guys are awesome i truly truly appreciate it so let's take a look at some of these stocks that could be setting up and remember guys that these are not recommendations to buy or sell any security um, make sure you do your own due diligence in these um, charts and make sure they fit you personally now yesterday i mentioned to members of right way options and we were looking at this chart i really like the way um we're setting up here in um, XLV. XLV healthcare has been very, very strong. And we also know that um, healthcare is one of those areas that can do pretty well, even if the market gets a little bit on the shaky side. So notice we've pulled back here in XLV and we're finding some price support in that chart. And we're hugging this right along this trend. Now, right now, um, this is how I look for charts. And by the way, um, hopefully this makes some sense to you. I am not, um, the guy who is out there chasing around the white candle. I'm actually looking for the chart pattern setting up prior to, and you can see right here, I've set a price alert. This right here is a price alert in the chart. And what I'm waiting for is if this shows a bullish candle that pops up in here. Now, I don't care if it happens today, tomorrow, the next day, but what I want it to be doing is reacting to this support and this trend in the chart. So if I can get that bullish signal to occur either here or here, doesn't really matter. It could come over here. Doesn't really matter. I'll be looking for a potential entry there into um, XLV um, in that healthcare sector, or I may switch over and look at the individual stocks that make up that sector, looking for that bullish opportunity um, in that in that chart. So that's how I look for these trades. I want to see that resting pullback. I want to see that consolidation that's holding trend and support. We get some nice charts starting to form up that way. Take a look at AMD. Here's another one of those charts, AMD, where we break that downtrend here, kind of slide out from under it. We're heading out over here to this trend. So I'm placed a price alert here on AMD. If that can find that bullish energy, to push on through, there may be some opportunities here in AMD after that pullback. Watch that carefully. It's looking pretty good here overall. As you guys know, I've been keeping an eye on um, Mo. I mentioned yesterday that I um, uh, have picked up a position here in Mo. And uh, Mo's a good divvy payer, um, one of those uh, consumer defensive stocks if the market gets a little bit shaky. Now it did exactly what we kind of thought it might do when I told everyone I was buying this and it might be a little bit of an early entry. And that fact that this may have to bounce around in here a little bit to come out to trend, to build enough energy maybe to pop through. So we ran up here yesterday, we tagged this resistance area in the chart and um, 
So no big surprise here, but um, keep an eye on Mo breaking out from underneath this downtrend, starting to look to the upside. We did this the same exact trade right over here where we broke the downtrend um, and took this nice move up in Altria. So keep a close eye on that. Looking very, very good. You might want to take a look at some short trades today. Now I've been mentioning these um, to folks in RWO and um, I think I mentioned them in some of the morning prep videos. Visa um, set itself up as a short. We're following this downtrend here. Notice we've kind of got that double top high in here. We're rejecting this resistance level in the chart and that short was a pretty simple um a thing to see uh, coming in that market watch this as that possibility this breaks that low and pushes on down to the next level of price support in the chart visa showing some weakness here showing um, a little bit of a problem on that weakness side you might want to take a look at um, an index like rwm um, RWM is an inverse ETF on IWM and with IWM failing its 50 day moving average, what you can see here is once again, we're holding that 50 day moving average here in RWM, the inverse of that move. And notice how quickly that can move when those indexes fail. Keep a close eye on RWM. We have that opportunity that we push right back above that 50 day moving average and that 50 day moving average is rising. So don't rule out that possibility that we could make this move back up here. It's a good way to hedge. It's a good way to hedge your overall positions or your overall account by picking up some of that inverse just in case the market does decide to make that roll. Can't say that that's going to happen, but something you might want to keep an eye on. Um, if you take a look at uh, DRIP, Drip is another one of those inverse ETFs that could be setting up again. Notice we set up right in here. There's my price alert. Could uh, setting up in here. There's that run that we had in that chart. But notice right in here that 50 day moving average is rising and we're holding some support in here. Now Drip is an inverse on oil expiration and it happens to be a two times. Um, so there is a little leverage in here which make can make it a little bit um, well, it's more of a trader than it is a buy and hold. Um, and you can see in here that possibility that that could start perking up if oil starts um, turning around to the downside. So keep a close eye on that. You might want to keep an eye on Fastenal, Fast. Interesting chart pattern here in Fast in that we broke support, reversed, came back up, and notice that yesterday we pushed down and we tagged that support level almost to the penny and buyers step back up in and pushing back up. So we have that hammer pattern possibility right off of that price support. Now all we need is a little bit of follow through to the upside. So you might wanna place a price alert up in here and see if that can push on through to the upside. We've been seeing um, housing stocks holding up quite well um, in the market. A little bit surprising to me, honestly, but um, because mortgage applications are not strong, but they're holding up very strongly. And we can see Fastenal as, as one of the companies that supplies all those builders, that opportunity that that could move on higher. So keep a close eye on that. Looking pretty decent here. So with that, everyone, hey, I want to wish you all a fantastic day in your trading. And I know this is, you know, I've been talking a lot about be careful, be careful, be careful. And, and I know that gets boring, but um, it's also um, been very important to continue to say it because there are some issues out there that concern us in the market in this. We know that at some point in time, um, those bears will re-engage and then they will stay engaged for a period of time. I don't know when that's going to be, but guys, be a little bit careful. I want to wish you all a fantastic day. I want to wish you great profits in your trading. And we'll see you right back here bright and early Monday morning. Wish you all of the best.